Welcome to the Insomnia Project, the holiday episodes, and Merry Christmas from all of us here at the Insomnia Project to everyone who celebrates Christmas, the happiest of holidays to everyone else, and thank you for joining us during the holidays. We are in a special place today, so you may hear the sound of gentle running water or the chimes as we celebrate Christmas with my in-laws and Amanda's parents here in Florida. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. I'm beside him. I'm Amanda in Florida. And of course, joining us, a fan favorite. This is Dan. I'm back again. That's Dan Barker, Amanda's dad. And this is the first (laughs) time we've had all three of us here. Amanda's mom is making turkey. She is. She's making her apple bourbon turkey that she makes every year. And I think she picked up the recipe from when we all lived in Nashville. And it's so lovely to be here with the sun, with the sounds of uh, water and the chimes. You know, we were just in Canada where it was snowy and cold. And to celebrate in the warmth, like a lot of our listeners do, it's a different kind of Christmas, but enjoyable nonetheless. There's a lot of lily pads. We're on a canal here. And this is different from the last time we were here. There are a lot of lily pads uh, floating around on the canal. It looks a little more uh, southern, a little more swampy, I think. No, I like it. No gators. What happened to the gators, Dan? Well, mating season came, mating season went, and with that, the alligators disappeared. When's gator mating season? It's That's certainly a, a Christmas thing everyone wants to know. <laughs> That's the best Christmas <laughs> gift. When would it be? Oh, I'm not really sure. I always picture the spring, summer time. Well, summer is for love and gators. I guess as it they is. Say. Winter is for lily pads and ducks because there's a whole bunch of ducks. A lot there. of ducks, yeah. I think a turtle too. I think I saw a turtle earlier. Oh, we have plenty of turtles in there. Yeah, there's yeah. always turtles in this canal. Along with a few fish. I'll say. It's a healthy ecosystem we're sitting on here with the chimes. How many chimes do we have here at this house, Dad? How many wind chimes? Well, we've only got a few up at the moment, but we have uh, approximately nine. Nine sets of chimes? Yep. Where are the rest of them? How many do you need? On my workbench, being repaired. My dad is a master of chimes. He used to make chimes. So we have, I think, the original Woodstock chimes from Woodstock, New York. Oh, maybe not. I'm not seeing them there. And then there's a a cowbell sort of chime thing happening behind me. That's actually a bell that a man developed up in Maine. He used to be a fisherman. And what you have is on all three sides, you have the bells of different... uh, lighthouses oh is that what it is yeah yeah it's a it's a that's neat it's a lighthouse you can see the little uh bobber thing i don't know what you'd call it i want to live in a lighthouse i think that's my dream is to live in a lighthouse did you ever want to live in a lighthouse dad uh let me see no (laughs) okay how about you marco no not particularly all right just me i've lived in a schoolhouse i've lived in a church i've lived in a lot of different buildings, but lighthouses, no. I found your old schoolhouse online. I found uh, the last photos of it online. Tell us about the schoolhouse and how you came to live there. Well, the schoolhouse... And for the record, Amanda, you did not live in the schoolhouse, did you? No, I'm the reason they don't (laughs) still live in the schoolhouse, I'm told. Okay, so let's hear it. Well, the schoolhouse was purchased by uh, my wife, Valerie, uh, back when I was just getting out of the Army. And when I got out, she needed some help painting and fixing it up, etc. It was a building built in 1848 by the uh, craftsmen who used to build ships up on the North River in Massachusetts. And so... What was unique about it, it was all uh, beams that were held by uh, wooden spikes, no nails. Wow. That's amazing. And unfortunately, the uh, building itself was last used around 1948 and fell into a lot of disrepair. 
uh, a gentleman who was an electric, uh, I'm sorry, a plumbing contractor, purchased it just to keep his pipes and other stuff in there. But uh, nothing went into it as far as the maintenance. So it's in very, very rough shape. And uh, a lot of work had to be done. And um, I got out of the Army, and that's what I started doing, helping to fix the place up. We uh, put a small apartment on the front side where we had two beautiful uh, doors that opened out that were approximately 10 feet high. And when you walked outside, there was a porch, which uh, some workmen were able to reconstruct. So primarily, uh, the rest was the dancing studio, uh, one big area. On the back of the building was an old chalkboard. Right. Oh, right. And that, uh, that was uh, kept. Uh, not much more I can tell you about it. What Most was the address again? Are we allowed to say the address, Marco? Well, we can say it, but well, hopefully it, the people who live there won't mind. It was in Hanover, Mass. Okay. And I'm not going to, you know, anybody who that really wants to look into it, there was only, there was only a couple of schoolhouses well, there. Well, it's like Old Schoolhouse Lane. There's a, a lane near it, but it's not They have built lane. a development behind it. Right. And mentioned that they named it after the schoolhouse. What was the first Christmas at that schoolhouse like for you? Well, first Christmas would be rather sparse. We uh, we had very little money. Um, I don't really remember too much except that, you know, the Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. We had a few ornaments and then went out and bought a whole bunch more ornaments. <laughs> Uh, some of which we still have, and uh, and remember, I'm talking 50 years ago. Sure. So. And with it, uh, we had a very nice Christmas. Uh, family was all in that town, and um, my wife uh, ended up doing Christmas dinner for both sides of the family. So we had quite a gang there. Fair. But the room was quite large and we could accommodate. Because it was an old schoolhouse room. That was sort of the main room, right? That's right. And then the bedroom was kind of like the loft upstairs. Was that the it idea? It was a tall building and we were able to put a bedroom uh, on a second floor and make a second floor. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the most sparse or, you know, the Christmases when you don't have much money to spend can be the most memorable. Mm-hmm. I know that we had a Christmas once where we didn't have very much at all, but we really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, you even talked about it. When? I don't remember, but we did have a Christmas where it's like the tree was just a tiny tree and we just kind of watched TV and cuddled by the fire. But we've always tried to travel at Christmas too. Sure. my family is away. I'm staring at this big ficus tree. Uh, I almost wonder if we should talk about that, or is that not Christmassy enough? Well, I mean, it's not an evergreen, but we can certainly talk about it. So we're sitting next to this big ficus tree, and uh, so a ficus plant, like a house plant, and that's what it was. And whoever built this house in 1994 planted it sort of between the house and the canal, and it's a huge, sprawling tree with uh, the roots. It's the type of tree where the roots kind of hang down from the branches and reach back into the ground. Almost like a banyan tree. Yeah, right? it is kind of like a banyan tree. And uh, we're next to a bird sanctuary, so which I think we've talked about before on the podcast. So it, uh, I think there's some nests in this tree, if I'm looking. There are several nests in the tree some of which you can see. There's one there, I can see. Yeah. And it's occupied uh, in years gone by. We've had different types of birds, cardinals, um, blue jays. Uh, this year I saw a couple Baltimore, or I call them Baltimore Orioles, Oriole birds. Sure. Right. And uh, as you know, we have three ducks out there that 
seem to be partial to that area. But you have longer birds too, like leggy birds, herons and things like that. Spoonbills. Well, yeah. we, we had egrets, uh, cranes, including uh, sand cranes, which are very large uh, in this area. And you mentioned the bird sanctuary back here, but also in the front of the house, it's a bird sanctuary. Oh, the, over there's the bird sanctuary? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. We're outside in it case It sounds more say. like a frog sanctuary at night. It's really loud with the frogs. So what that's it, a bird sanctuary? What it is, uh, yeah, the school kids, the elementary school kids years ago, had a drive where they raised money and they were able, able to purchase that property mm -hmm. and, the, and the property across the street from that. And uh, it's a scrub jay uh, uh, sanctuary. What's that, a bird? Scrub jay? That is a bird. Um, the old Christmas scrub jay. <laughs> <laughs> well, basically the bird uh, nests very low in the ground. Oh, okay. Okay, so nobody, you're allowed to walk through it, etc. But uh, and they do take care of it by keeping the uh, the bushes and the trees trimmed so it's quite nice but uh, talking of birds I mean we've got everything from vultures and eagles to to uh, hummingbirds here so mm -hmm. it runs the gamut. Amanda I wanted to ask you since we're here with your folks what are some Christmas traditions that you like to do with your family when you're with them for Christmas? Um, the biggest tradition in our family is sort of complaining and being rude about the gifts. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think of anything else. I know well, that I one tradition we always had is we allowed uh, the children, the kids, and we had three kids, uh, to open one present on Christmas Eve. Right. Okay. right. And they got their choice of which one they wanted to open. Um, I don't know if they did anything for this sleeping at night I think it just wound them up a little more but but <laughs> nonetheless we did that every year that was always such a special gift that night and then by the end of Christmas day you forgot about the one you opened that night what if you opened one that was like socks is that it was like mom the... would usually guide us and oh. say this is probably the one you want <laughs> she would she would kind of tell us which one was like the the safe bet but she did want us to open our matching pajamas and matching pajamas was a was a pretty big tradition for a while with my sister and I uh, and Becca who you'll hear in a few days um, and Marco you got to partake in that tradition this year well we we arrived yesterday evening Christmas Eve and it was a bit of a whirlwind to get here and it was awesome that we got here and one of the first things your mom said was there's something for you in the bedroom and we went and it was two matching pajamas and I've never had matching pajamas or Christmas pajamas for that matter no no and for me it was you quite glorious. really enjoyed them yeah because when you see a lot of people doing that where families sort of wear matching pajamas it's kind of something you you admire but I don't know I never thought of purchasing it and then the ones we got have little gnomes on it, mm -hmm. Christmas gnomes, and they have like a little trailer that they're pulling or something. It says the North Pole. It's and a lot little... of gnome sequencing. Yeah, and so Amanda and I have a matching pair, and we put it on this morning or last night, and it was so much fun. That's a plane above us. Where's that plane going? Uh, it's, if I see it, and I see it there. It's a corporate jet, so it came out of uh, Vero Beach. Okay. How do you know it's a corporate jet? How can you tell Just by the shape of it. Really? Yeah. Oh. I didn't realize the airport path was here. I never hear planes. I guess it's just the private jets that, that yeah. fly this way. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, Vero Beach has quite a few corporate jets, uh, a lot of uh, personal aircraft planes, mm -hmm. etc. Um, One of the traditions that I've established here in this household is after we look at our stocking gifts I will take the stocking and put it on my foot yep, and wear that's it. that's your tradition. And it seems like no one enjoys it except <laughs> me because your mom always says don't stink up my stockings <laughs> and I said that's the joy of Christmas. I just saw something in the canal splash something mm -hmm. big splash into the water. 
Probably a fish. Or a turtle, maybe. Um, yeah. As I'm trying to think. Well, we've talked a lot about stockings and we have. stocking traditions. You'll notice in your stocking here, yes. the gifts were not wrapped. Yes, they weren't. For our listeners, because this was very controversial, Dan, where we... My family wraps our stocking gifts, but your family doesn't. And we talked about it early in the month because we're doing 31 days of holidays. And a lot of our listeners said, you don't wrap your stockings? How barbaric. So since you're the head of this household, I put it to you. Why don't you guys (laughs) wrap your stocking gifts? My listeners need the answer. Well, I think it goes back hundreds of years, actually. Okay. Uh, Back when the Vikings uh, invaded England... Uh, we didn't have time to wrap all the gifts before they came and took them. I see. Um, <laughs> there you go. One of the things that we get, Dan, for Christmas, and we do a lot of research on this, is books. And books about war, books about soldiers, books about treasure hunting, books about um, mm-hmm. famous people. <laughs> the, we, we've got this this. This year we got him the book about the Wedgwood guy who does Wedgwood pottery. Books about antiquing. How many books do you read a year, Dan? Well, since I've retired, I read uh, quite a few. I always have a book on the go. Sometimes I have two or three books on the go. Different subjects. Um, What books do you have on the go now? Right now I have a book about... um, George Washington and Benedict Arnold. Oh, the terrible twosome. Uh huh. And it uh, actually goes into quite a bit of detail about the revolution and the different battles. But are these the books you like, or is these the books that we just kind of get you thinking you like them? So if there was a subject of books we should be getting you, are we hitting that subject? In other words, are we getting you the right books? Well, (laughs) yes, because I read all types of books, not just uh, war stories or battles or what have you. I mean, we have a strong military background. My wife's father was, of course, in World War II uh, with Third Army and and, uh, in a tank unit. Um, I, of course served my time during the Vietnam War. Um, It's rather interesting because certain decisions are made on the battlefield where you would not believe or understand. And many of them are very gut uh, reactions to what's going on, so. Kind of like the birds in the background. (laughs) that are squawking right now. There's a lot of bird action happening here. Every once in a while. It was quiet when I came out. And then (laughs) birds and planes came on by. Amanda, let me ask you. What are some of your memorable Christmases that you had with your family? Um, I don't know. (laughs) I really don't know. Uh, Like, good memories you're talking. Of course, good memories. Um, I love that your family always likes to go into the... Honestly, Marco, <laughs> um, one year in Nashville, uh, mom got, uh, she wrote down a bunch of s- subjects, I think, and asked for your memory or your opinion on them. And you and mom went back and forth just talking about your opinions and memories of things and like what was your greatest accomplishment or your favorite memories of certain things so that that was nice it should be known that the nashville house had the 12 foot tree it did have a 12 foot tree yeah that's the story that we hear often it's a big sprawling tennessee house but the florida house that we're in now has the 12 foot birds outside (laughs) making a lot of noises it's a smaller tree. Yeah, it does have a smaller tree. Well, we downsized this year to a uh, four-foot tree. Last yeah. year was four a Four and si- a half feet, if you want to be technical. Last year was a six-foot tree. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm trying to think, what about you, Marco? What are some of your favorite Christmas memories? Well, I've said this on the podcast before, how 
I was always wanted to be a fisherman as a kid. I was really into fish. Mm -hmm. And so one year when I was about, I would say nine, 10 years old, my parents bought me an aquarium. And for me, that was the be all and end all. And so I set up the aquarium. And the funny thing is I've always had freshwater aquariums. I've always wanted a saltwater aquarium. Oh, interesting. But everyone says how difficult a saltwater aquarium is to maintain and set up. And so I never did it. Um, I'm sure for a child, a saltwater aquarium would be so much work. And my parents probably didn't have the time to deal with that. Yeah. And so we went with freshwater uh, aquarium. But I had that for years and years and would you know, really sort of just enjoy having the fish in there and mm -hmm. watching them and, and getting different fish and making sure they were compatible. And then one year my fish had baby fish and right. it was quite exciting. So I think that was one of my most memorable years was, cool. that, was, that, was that year that I got an aquarium. Now, there's something interesting, Marco. My father got into the hobby of raising fish. Oh, really? Tropical fish. I didn't know this. I didn't know that. I don't know. I didn't know this. We had approximately 20, 20, 20 gallon uh, aquariums down in our uh, lower level, our basement. And so, of course, raising them uh, and selling them back to uh, uh, pet stores, etc. So I've always been around tropical fish, and uh, and he raised everything from neons to guppies to uh, uh, the striped fish, which I forget the name of. The angelfish, or uh... not angelfish? No, no. He didn't. He didn't go in for fish that would <laughs> eat the profit, sure. so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> so. I had no idea. I Th didn't know that. This is one of, one of the reasons I love doing podcasts with your dad because these stories come out. So he had, what would what was your role in the fish propagating and, and well, stuff? oftentimes I mean we had a special uh, little mini tank, um, and the guppies were very good at this. Um, you put the the mother fish in, and it was a V. Right. With an opening slot at the bottom. Yes. And the fish, the little guy, the little guys, would just naturally go down and get separated. So uh, from there, we could put them in their own tanks and raise oh. them and take well, care of them. Where did you keep all these fish? Well, we had a, what's called a split level house. Yeah. So the bottom level, which was unfinished, is where they all were. Oh. Now the other interesting thing is I, when I married your mother, I had an aquarium, of just a small 10 gallon, and she very much disliked it. Yeah, I could imagine that. She uh, thought it smelled like a, uh, <laughs> a uh, well, I won't be kind about a sewer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So anyways, that's why you've never had a fish. Garrett had a, Garrett had fish. Do you remember? Yes, we I know. Yeah, I never got any. But. Wait, what did fish did Garrett have? Guppies. Okay. He had a he had a nice tank. Oh, and then he had turtles. I heard about in the turtles. In Canada, we yeah. had turtles, but um, in Massachusetts we had guppies, and I think they gave birth, and that was very exciting. I think we overfed them a lot. We really <laughs> wanted to feed them a lot. <laughs> oh, it happens. Well, listen. Well, what else do you do with fish? I don't know. You look yeah. at them and you name them and you. You pretend that they're the little puppy that you dreamt of having. <laughs> no, fish are lovely to watch and feed, and they're relaxing, much like this podcast. Mm -hmm. And although today's podcast wasn't really Christmassy in theme, <laughs> um, it was certainly lovely to be with both of you here in Florida I'm by glad the canal. People can hear the birds for the first time. I think we should do more of these outside. Yeah, we talk about them. Well, we're going to be here for the next little bit, so we will we will record more episodes here. You'll also hear some episodes from the past. Dan, thank you for sharing some of your Christmas memories. Uh, you're welcome. Have you ever played Santa? I have. Tell us about that before. I we... have played Santa. Well, of course, my wife had a school of performing arts, so I used to do a mid-year show just before Christmas. 
and it would uh, it ended by Santa Claus coming out and and uh, talking to all the the children and they all got little gifts, uh, etc. Um, I took it over actually from my father-in-law. My father-in-law started this tradition. He he was as close to a quote-unquote professional Santa as you would find. Mm -hmm. I see. He he did Santa Claus in one of the major large retail uh, shopping malls, and he had that job uh, every year. Um, I don't know, you know. I don't know how. Looking at Amanda, she must remember Santa and her. Yeah. She, I, I'm pretty sure she knew it was me. Oh yeah, I did. Well, I knew it was Grandpa too, mm -hmm. um, but. I uh, just believed that you guys were playing the role, and if kids ever said it wasn't the real Santa, I would say, no, he was hired by the real Santa. <laughs> what are some What are some keys for our listeners that you need to know or do when you're playing Santa? Any tips you can give prospective Santas who are listening today? Well, uh, I think. You know, some overlooked keys are you've got to be natural. I mean, mm. let your your personality come out and shine. And of course, everything is positive at that time of year. Of course. You know, I uh, I wasn't the Grinch. I don't believe when I put the suit on. I might have been when I took the suit off, but <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> Jekyll and Hyde. But, uh, you know, Mandy talking about her uh, remembrances of, uh, of uh, Christmas time. There were certain things that in our family stand out to this day. One is the gifts that I would have purchased for uh, my wife. Uh, we have it on tape uh, many years, not just one, where she would open it and say something to the effect Oh, I don't believe you bought me that. <laughs> well, there was one time when I was living in Korea. I, I wish I still had this tape. I don't know where the, all these tapes went. But anyway, my parents sent a tape along of Christmas. And of course, I didn't get it until February because it took a long time to get over there back then. And uh, so I, in February, I opened up Christmas and watched it with my roommate. And she was like, your family's awful. I can attest to the fact that a New England Christmas with New Englanders is not always <laughs> the most peppy, bright. Everybody that year, I mean, I watched that tape so many times, I pretty much memorized what it was like. All of you, m my mom was like, oh, you didn't get me not. Why did you get me knives? I had knives with my first marriage. I gave them away. <laughs> That's one thing. And then another part of that tape was my dad going, my mom gave him a watch and he was like she said do you like it he goes I like it except where it says professional who the hell would wear a watch that says professional on it memories yep you guys still one other quick yep, memory sure. though concerning <laughs> Mandy <laughs> is that she most probably doesn't realize it but we had to protect her from her older sister if she got a toy or something that her older sister this coveted is, this is Becca mm -hmm. you'll be hearing this in a few Becca. days um, she would find a way in which she could usurp it. Oh, really? Oh. Oh, yeah. And so we were, you know, whether you know it or not, we were rather protective of you. Uh, but, of course, you know, there were also gifts that the old Becca got that she wanted to play with. Yeah. And she had no problem just going up and taking it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Siblings, little kids at Christmas. It's yeah, hard, right? It's well, I will say this. As complainy as you guys may be, there is also <laughs> a lot of fun to be had um, around the Christmas dinner table with you guys or opening presents and just laughing about things because as much as you will complain about a gift, you guys also have a great sense of humor. That's a motorcycle in the background. I, I just want to point out. Sure. If you missed it. What's it? When she opened the little Dutch oven. I was going to say, yeah. Right? So Dan bought Valerie, his wife, a little Dutch oven. So just uh, to set the scene. Uh, all it was was a two-quart. 
And she looks and says, well, I wanted a four quart. Yeah, she did say that. <laughs> but she didn't realize that I had already gone out and spent a lot of money at a very high-end store and bought her a six quart uh, that does a few more things than you know. And the two quart, I thought about when I saw it, and I said, for the money, it's just the two of us. What is she going to cook? Mm-hmm. Right. In a, you know, in a larger one. So I said, well, she'll, you know, give it, get her two, rather than just one. <laughs> but the way it was accepted, I'm sure you saw her. Yeah. Uh, Our niece, who who everybody would have heard yesterday. She, yeah, yesterday so, yeah. She one year was really really pissed off because Santa brought her clothes, and she was just mad. She was like, he did not get the memo. I did not ask for clothes. I didn't want clothes. And she was mad. And one year she was like, I remember Christmas night. She's like, but Santa screwed up a little bit. And because she didn't get her the first. She was very quick to say what Santa's missteps were. My favorite thing, my favorite thing that she does is she whispers to Santa what she wants to test. To test Santa. And her parents. So her parents don't know what she's whispered to Santa. So they have to figure out what my niece wants yeah oh, I, sometimes I think it's these these kind of things these sort of moments not of light around Christmas but of you know listen my, that's why you're like tell me your favorite Christmas memories it's like well but they but they are when you yeah. tell them they are your favorites like when you <laughs> when you talk about things like that we do laugh about them totally. well isn't that why certain movies uh, do so well year after year mm-hmm. The old Griswolds uh, celebrating Christmas, uh, you know, having the family over, the squirrel knocking over the, the tree. tree yeah. Cetera. But there are some really lovely moments with your family around Christmas time when we're drinking coffee and having sweets. I would like to go just... for a Christmas bike ride or All go right. for a Christmas walk on the beach All right, before well, the sun goes down. Well, it seems uh, the sun is... You do it tomorrow. No, we've got time. No, you don't. And for a walk we do yes well okay. you know what then I guess this is where we leave everyone and we send our Christmas wishes and look who's just come out to take a photo oh god hello um, you can only do it if you be on the podcast oh, oh she's <laughs> leaving <laughs> and there you have it well thank you all for always uh, in the Christmas spirit yes <laughs> thank you all for listening we'll have a few more shows before the end of the year and until then from our family to yours we wish you all a Merry Christmas Amanda do you have any words no I just want to I just I just want to take a bike ride okay we're going to go for a bike ride Dan thank you so much for being on the podcast today yes thank you Merry Bye. Christmas everyone <laughs> Merry Christmas <laughs>